it's hard to imagine what Fresno would be like without the Marjorie Mason Center, but I can tell you uh, there'd be a, a lot more repeat victimization. There'd be a lot more people lose their life uh, at the hands of domestic violence because they wouldn't have a place to escape to. And that's why we rely heavily on the Marjorie Mason Center in Fresno. But oftentimes we don't have the ability to provide a particular service, but we have um, community-based organizations out there who can then provide that service for us. So the main thing that we can do is to make sure that those organizations are financially supported so that they, are, that they can be sustained over long periods of times in our community. For over four decades, law enforcement agencies here in Fresno County have had the opportunity to work side by side and partner with the Marjorie Mason Center when it comes to providing services and support for the victims of domestic violence. If it was not for the Marjorie Mason Center, Many of these victims of domestic violence would have no place to go, no place to receive support, and would have to go back out on the streets, and in many times, go back into the very homes and places where they're impacted by violence. One of the most difficult things that people can do is to get out of a domestic violence relationship. As a prosecutor and also as a, a, a board member, I spent nearly a decade on the board at Marjorie Mason and seeing the comprehensive services that they have at the center um, that guide people through this process is really just an amazing thing. One of the things I think that's so tremendous is the No More program that has gone um, really just spread rampantly through the school systems where we're talking to young people about domestic violence. The treatment that they provide, the legal options classes that they have for, for the victims, it, it's tremendous. It's, it's really a full wraparound service um, environment. And I think also the thing that is really unique to the Marjorie Mason Center is they also provide services for the offender. We use the Marjorie Mason Center services for batter's treatment programs. And so uh, really teaching both the offender and the victim how to live harmoniously and peacefully is really the goal because nobody, the, the courts, the Marjorie Mason Center, law enforcement, nobody wants to tear families apart. We just want to teach them how to live in peace and how to live um, in, in environments where they can communicate and they can resolve differences without violence. I've talked with uh, people that have uh, been through Marjorie Mason Center to seek assistance and uh, and it's it's led them to a better life. They've become good citizens, got jo uh, gotten jobs. So it's not just a, a place where, where they can uh, go and seek refuge. There's the services that are very important to our community because that strengthens our community, the, the work that Marjorie Mason does. Domestic violence in Fresno County is a very major issue. If you compare us to the 10 largest cities in California, Fresno has amongst the highest rates. Uh, just last year, we responded to almost 9,000 calls for service related in some way, shape, or form to domestic violence. So is it a, a major issue? Of course it is. And then when you really focus on the fact that it deals with, with families, I mean, domestic violence deals with families. And the high emotion, the high impact, uh, stress and trauma that's associated with all that, it, it makes it really one of the most important calls that a police officer can respond to. It's sobering to know that 9,000 calls annually are happening on the basis of domestic violence. It's reasonable to assume if you figure three quarters of those calls involve families that have children, that's probably about just under 7,000 kids who are impacted every year. I mean, you can imagine as a kid, it's hard enough to learn new content when you just sit in class and you're gathering new information. Um, all the much more so when you're not available for learning because you're worried about what's going on in the safety of yourself or your family or people that you love and care about. We constantly have to fight for the minds and hearts of the kids that are there in our sphere. Where there is domestic abuse and violence uh, in the home and or if a child or teen uh, suffers that directly, Every, almost every metric that we would measure their health is negatively impacted by those events and that environment. And the challenge we have as community leaders is to invest in ways that we break those cycles. And so they're not just focused at Marjorie Mason on dealing with the issues in the moment, but they're trying to get upstream and address the causes and they're working with our educators to do that. Communities by design are intended to keep people safe and give people a sense of belonging and provide them with some kind of safety net if they need help. And for folks that have experienced domestic violence, they feel neither safe nor belonging 
nor feel like they have any hope. So for our city to be able to be part of that was really wonderful. And the work with the Marjorie Mason Center in presumably what has to be the most difficult time for a woman and her family or herself is just, it's a really, it's a privilege. Um, so it, it adds to the richness of community. Domestic violence is unique. It's, it's kind of hidden behind closed doors. And a lot of times you don't know that somebody needs help. We have experienced in the last few years kind of an increase though in some of our more violent domestic violence uh, cases. We've had some homicides. And so we've really um, wanted to increase our partnership, grow and develop uh, our relationship with the Marching Mason Center even further uh, to try to prevent these things from, from escalating to that level. So a donation to the Marjorie Mason Center um, is, is likely helping somebody, it could be your next door neighbor, that might not have the resources to go to the courthouse and get that restraining order or seek housing in a safe area outside of their home. So I would encourage you to donate to the Marjorie Mason Center and help your neighbor that might be in need. An investment in the Marjorie Mason Center definitely saves lives. Thank you for supporting the Marjorie Mason Center.